Can you believe that this piece behind me, right here, can you believe this piece behind me is not wood at all? Not even a little bit. Not even one section of this piece is wood. If you guys wanna see how I did that, stay tuned. What if you had bought a non-wood piece of furniture and you just don't have the money to go buy new furniture or to go thrifting, but you really want a new look? I'm gonna show you today how to paint a piece of furniture that is maybe something that you got from Walmart or you know one of those box stores that will save you some money by painting it and give you a whole new look. Hey everybody, my name is Krasana, so welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos. Also, everything I use is always in the description below. Today, I'm, and if you are not new here, welcome back, family, friends and family, welcome back. And so today what I'm gonna do, I have a friend who bought this TV stand. Yes, it's white. And it is, you know, your run of the mill, Walmart, Target, Amazon type piece of furniture, one that you assemble. It's an assembled type piece of furniture, not solid wood, particle board. And I have done a video before on how to paint furniture that's not solid wood, but I wanted to go back to the basics again. For those of you who maybe are new to the channel, maybe you missed that video, maybe you're a beginner, I get questions a lot about how to paint pieces of furniture like this. What if you're on a budget and you don't have the money to even go thrifting, but you have this and you wanna make it new? Because I've told you guys this before, I, I have a master's in psychology and what I've realized with furniture over the years is that it does affect our mood. And when you have a nice piece of furniture in your living area that you see all the time, it can make you happy. And so I'm going to paint this for my friend. We're going to give it a makeover. It's not gonna be super colorful, but we are gonna do a little bit of texture, some crackle. And I wanna show you how you can paint these you know, big box furniture pieces that we assemble if you don't have the money to go buy a nice solid wood piece of furniture or even to go thrifting. And so I'm gonna show you how to redo this piece and how to, the steps you need to take to make sure that it has longevity. So if you guys wanna see how I do that, please stay here because we are going to get started. Get ready. My first step is to remove the hardware. This piece is brand new, so I don't need to clean it because it literally just came out of the box and was assembled. So I am going to take the hardware off and the next thing I'm gonna do is apply Dixie Belle Slick Stick to it. I always make sure I stir it really, really well because things can fall to the bottom of the jar so you wanna make sure it is thoroughly stirred. This is a gripping primer. So what this is going to do, it's a gripping primer or a bonding primer and this is going to allow my paint to stick to this surface. This piece is not wood at all. This is only particle board. So I, you need, if you're going to be painting particle board, you need to use a gripping primer. And that's what I'm going to do is do a one layer of this, one coat of this on the entire piece, allow it to dry for a few hours. And I'm going to put a second layer and I'm going to allow it to sit for 24 hours before I do anything else with it. Because my client wants a distressed look and this is not wood, I'm gonna use coffee bean, which is a very, very dark brown, and I'm gonna outline all the areas that I want some distress on it. So these will be like the natural distressed areas. 
And then what's going to happen is I'm going to apply this coffee bean and then later on I'm going to put my drop cloth over it. And then when I go back to distress later on, that coffee bean will pull through those distressed areas and it will give me a, dis it'll look more distressed. It kind of takes the place of when you distress down to the wood. So I am only doing this so that when I distress later, you can see that dark popping through. We're also gonna do some texture and crackle and other things. So I'm using sea spray, which is a texture additive, and I will be using gravel road, which is a dark gray color. Now I'm just gonna show you what to look for. I don't measure my stuff. So I'm gonna pour some gravel road in here, and then I'm going to take a scoop of the sea spray and only put half of the scoop in, and I'm gonna mix it. I'm gonna mix a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna do half the scoop in there and then I'm gonna mix it thoroughly and then I'll add a little bit more and a little bit more, a little bit more. If it's too thick, you can add a little bit more paint. If it's not thick enough, then that's when you wanna add more sea spray. So I'm just mixing these thoroughly. What I want at the end is like a brownie like batter consistency and you'll see once I get to the end what it looks like, it's not going to fall off of this stir stick. I'm gonna use a cheap chip brush that I'm gonna just throw away afterwards, and I'm gonna apply this texture to the piece in random areas. I'm gonna do a lot in the corners, anywhere that I want some dark texture popping through is where I'm gonna do it. And what I'm doing is just using a stippling motion. You can wait for it to start tacking up a little bit and go back and let it stipple up a little bit more. But this C spray, is not super thick. So it's not, the texture is not gonna be super thick on here, whereas you could add more sea spray and you can let your texture be as thick or as thin as you possibly want it. So this right here is gonna be more of a thin texture look. After my sea spray thoroughly dries, I'm gonna go over it with my drop cloth and that's gonna be the main color for my piece. Because my client wanted a gray top, I am using manatee gray on the very top of this piece. And you'll see in a little bit, I am going to tone it down just a little bit with one of the water-based stains that Dixie Belle carries. But for now, I am going to put this manatee gray all over the very top of this piece.
All of my paint is dry and this next step, you could omit it if you want to. I'm gonna do some crackle and I'm just gonna do a little bit, but you can see it's super thick, sort of like Elmer's glue. I take a cheap chip brush, I wipe off as much as I can, and I'm gonna do just thin layers of the crackle right now. I don't, the, the thinner you put it, the thinner the cracks are. And so I just want it to be pretty subtle. I want everything to be cohesive at the end. So I'm not doing crazy, crazy texture. I'm not doing a bunch of crazy crackle, nothing like that. I want it to still be kind of classy at the end, but have an old world look. So I'm adding the crackle in random areas. Now this will dry to a glossy sheen. It goes on looking glossy and it dries like that. So what you're gonna do is once it's completely dry, you're going to go over it with your paint. You only wanna go in one direction. So you can see here, I'm going in one direction. I flip it, go over just a second, and then I'm also gonna stipple it. You do not wanna back brush because if you back brush, then what you're doing is you are almost filling in that crackle, okay? So go over it one direction here and then walk away from it. Right here, you go in one direction and that's it, leave it alone. Do not overwork it, otherwise you're gonna erase the crackle. And here is what your crackle will look like. Again, I wanted just very subtle crackle to make it look very natural and so this is the look that I got. After I was done going over my crackle, I did go over the areas with the paint and just did a second coat of my drop cloth with that cheap chip brush. And then once everything was dry, now I'm taking my surf prep sander. So you're gonna wanna take probably like a 120 grit sandpaper and you're gonna go over the entire piece. And what you can see here is when I go over the texture, at right now it looks like drop cloth, but once I go over it, it reveals that gravel road color underneath. So it's giving that dark look. And then remember when we did the coffee bean, if you look at those edges, that exposes that coffee bean right there as well. So you could have done coffee bean for all of it if you wanted to, or gravel road for all of it if you wanted to, but I was just experimenting. So don't feel like you have to use all the different color paints. You could just use gravel road for your texture and for those areas that are distressed or a coffee bean, whichever one you want. I do wanna add grunge gray wax later, so I'm going to put down a clear wax first. This will allow my wax to move a little bit easier and I can wipe it away a little bit easier, but I am putting the Easy Peasy Spray Wax on the entire piece right now, and you just spray it on there and you rub it in, and I allow it to dry for about an hour before I go in with my colored waxes. My Easy Peasy Spray Wax is dry now, so I'm gonna go in with my Grunge Gray Wax, and I'm using the La Petite brush. It's one of the newer brushes, and I'm gonna go in all of the corners, a little bit thicker in the corners, because that's where I want the color to be thicker, and I'm gonna do just a skim coat of the wax over top of everything else. I do want to kind of grunge up this entire piece, and that is why I'm waxing everything. I am not using the wax as a sealer. You will see with Dixie Bell's wax, wax is not last anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wax this piece. I'm gonna wipe everything away. I'll walk you through it. And then I'm actually gonna go over it with the satin clear coat in a few days. So right now I'm just applying my grunge gray wax everywhere that I want it. And then in a couple minutes, I'm going to wipe it back. You can use clear wax as an eraser for any colored waxes that you're using. So I'm gonna bring in my Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I'm gonna put a layer of it on there and I'm gonna take my microfiber cloth and I'm gonna start wiping it back so that I can make sure that I get some of that color off. I obviously don't want my piece to look like this. So I'm taking a microfiber cloth and I'm gonna wipe back as much as I want. And if I want it to be a little bit darker in some areas, I can reapply the wax in a little while, but right now what I'm doing is trying to just remove everything so that I can step back and see what my piece looks like. I do want to tell you that depending on what your waxes are, so if you are using water-based wax, stick with water-based wax 
to like a clear water-based wax to erase it. If you're using an oil-based wax, make sure you're using a clear oil-based wax to erase it. Do not mix the oil and water-based waxes together. Also, I said wax is not last with Dixie Belle. That is because their wax is water-based and they have a proprietary formula with their wax and their top coat. So if you wax with Dixie Belle's wax, but you use a different top coat, it's not gonna give you the same results. So I just wanna make sure I put that disclaimer out there that you can't just mix and match wax that's water and oil and all the things. Okay, so now I'm using the water-based wax in Tobacco Road. This is the Voodoo, Voodoo Gel Stain and it's water-based and I'm going to just put it on top of the entire piece and what this is going to do is it's actually going to tone down my manatee gray and make it a little bit warmer than it already is because it's a cool tone. So I'm going to apply a thin layer across the whole entire top and then I'm going to spritz a little bit of water with my fine mist sprayer and wipe it back a little bit. And this is just gonna kind of warm up the top and make sure that everything is cohesive. It's been a few days and everything is dry, all my wax, all my gel stain, and so I'm gonna go over my piece with my satin clear coat. I'm using a synthetic brush to do this. You can use whatever your favorite brush is. I like using the synthetic brush, but I'm doing a thin layer of the satin clear coat over everything as a final sealer to kind of lock in all those corners and the wax that I put in the corners. Okay, everybody, so this piece is done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Remember, everything I use will be in the description below. You can revive this furniture that you have that is particle board. I know I did a little bit more. This is a custom, that is why I did texture and other things like that, but you can just use slick stick, paint, seal it, and you're good to go and you have a whole different look. If you want to add the texture and other things like that, absolutely you can as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and until next week, happy creating and I will see you guys later. Bye.